Although flies and humans may look and act very different, some of our genetic material is very similar. Nearly 75% of human disease-causing genes can be found in the fly. This is one of the reasons why the fruit fly, Drosophila melanogaster, is a popular model organism used to study neuroscience. Flies can help us unravel many mysteries of the human brain. Scientists ask questions like, how does the nervous system develop? How do neurons, or nerve cells, communicate with each other? How can we sense our environment and react to it? Answering these important research questions will help scientists to develop therapeutics to treat brain diseases in humans. You might be thinking, wait, the fly has a brain? Yes, its nervous system is composed of two parts. One, the brain sitting in the head. And two, the ventral nerve cord, which is comparable to our spinal cord and is located on the fly's belly side. This part controls most of the bodily movements like walking and flying. With only about 135,000 neurons, the fly brain provides a much easier model to study such a complex organ compared to the human brain, which has about 86 billion neurons. The fly brain receives information from the eyes, antennae, and other sensors located on the body. It makes decisions about how to react to a threat, what food to eat, or which fly friends to hang out with. Flies can also learn and remember many things, like smells or locations of objects. Since it's hard to look at all the neurons in the brain at the same time, neuroscientists will pick a few neurons that they can easily identify to study. This is true for many models, including the fly. A popular group of neurons, called a neural network, to study in the fly is the giant fiber system. This network of just a few neurons helps the fly escape in response to a threat, like your hand trying to swat it. One of the neurons in this system is very large compared to the other neurons and is therefore called the giant fiber. This neuron is a special type of neuron called an interneuron. Interneurons serve as the connectors between other neurons, allowing several neurons to communicate with each other. For example, the giant fiber receives information about its environment from sensory neurons located in the fly's eyes and antennae then transmits electrical and chemical signals to the next neuron. In this case, the next neuron is a motor neuron that stimulates a muscle in the fly's leg, allowing the fly to jump away. Let's take a closer look and zoom in on a 3D structure of the two giant fibers in the fly brain, one giant neuron for each side of the body. We can easily recognize the important parts of a neuron, the soma, the dendrites, and the axons. Let's start at the soma, the cell body. Just like the other cells that make up your body, the soma contains organelles which help control all the functions of the cell. A very important organelle is in the center of the soma, the nucleus, and it contains the DNA, or genetic material. The cells need DNA to act as a blueprint to direct cellular activity. Now on to the dendrites and the axons, which are responsible for receiving and sending a signal. But how? The soma is connected to the rest of the neuron by the primary neurite. From here, there are many dendrites branching off the neurite. At the end of each dendrite are many fine branches that receive chemicals, known as neurotransmitters, from other neurons. Those other neurons relate information from the antenna and the eyes of the fly to the giant fibrous dendrites. After the dendrites receive chemical signals, a small electric current is generated that travels along the dendrites to the axon. For the giant fiber neuron, the axon is extra big, which allows the electrical signal to travel extremely fast. Once the neuron is ready to send out a signal, an explosion of electrical activity, known as an action potential, is generated at the start of the axon. Action potentials can only travel in one direction along the axon to the axon terminal, where the signal will be transmitted at a tiny junction called a synapse to the motor neuron. The process of receiving visual input from sensory neurons to the brain, relaying it to the giant fiber neuron, to the ventral nerve cord, and then to a motor neuron to allow the fly to move happens in less than one second. That's why it's so hard to successfully swat a fly.